Senator Ted Cruz had a tweet that aged very, very poorly. Uh, now, the tweet in question, of course, has to do with power. Uh, power, which seems to not be in large supply in Texas right now. In fact, on Monday night, ERCOT, that is the uh, local Texas authority when it comes to energy, issued a warning for Texans to conserve power as the state's self-isolated energy grid began to fall, uh, I'm sorry, fail, in the recent heat wave. So it's hot in Texas, uh, of course, you're not surprised. Uh, but there is a heat wave also going on in Texas. And as a result of the demand from the high temperatures, Texas's main power grid has been struggling to keep up with demand for electricity, prompting the operator to ask Texans to conserve power until the end of the week. So Monday, they're like, hey, this week, we know it's a heat wave. You might want to, you know, not use power. Oh, oh, the, the, you mean the time that we need it? We're not supposed to use it. Uh, to use it. Oh, great. Uh, so now the Electric Reliability Council of Texas said in a statement on Monday that a significant number of unexpected power plant outages combined with expected record use of electricity due to hot weather has resulted in a tight grid conditions. Approximately 12,000 megawatts of generation were offline on Monday or enough to power about 2.4 million homes on a hot summer day. So that is a fairly significant. ERCOT officials said Power plant outages were unexpected and could not provide details as to what could be causing them. Now, uh, tell me again, the wonders of free market capitalism when it comes to, of course, basic necessities like energy. It's supposed to be more efficient. It's supposed to be good, right? Uh, no, uh, apparently it turns out not to be good. Of the plants offline, about 96 I'm sorry, 9,600 uh, 9, megawatts of power, or nearly 80% of the outages are from thermal power sources, which in Texas are largely natural gas-fired power plants. So you're probably going to hear, or you're probably already hearing that, hey, um, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, these power outages, uh, pff, solar panels, alternative energy, what are you going to do? We should invest more heavily in fossil fuels. That would be a complete prevarication. It's a lie. Sad. Uh, it's, you know, actually, uh, the fault of, well, there's a lot of fault here, but none of it's on alternative energy. That's for sure. Uh, now that 9,600 megawatts of power is actually several times what ERCOT usually sees offline for thermal generation maintenance during the summer day. Typically only about 3,600 megawatts of thermal generation are offline this time of year. The grid operator also estimates demand for electricity could exceed 73,000 megawatts on Monday. The previous record for June was 69,100 megawatts in 2018. That is a, that's a nice number. Not so nice now. Uh, gee, what could be one of the reasons temperatures are going so high? Hmm. I mean, hmm. I mean uh, of course, it's Texas. Yeah, Texas is dry. Texas is hot. It's summer. Um, in fact, uh, as uh, Joshua Rhodes, research associate, the Weber Energy Group, the University of Texas in Austin, says, electricity demand is really driven by temperatures. Right now, it is 99 degrees in Dallas, 97 degrees in Austin, and 97 degrees in Houston. He said at those high temperatures, people tend to turn on their air conditioners, which, of course, uh, makes all the sense in the world. Now, of course, when so many people engage your air conditioning units, that tends to strain the grid, if they're, especially if they're not expecting anything. At the same time, he said power plants were already having a rough year, given the damage that happened back in February uh, during that ice storm, uh, which causes or may be causing new complications. So I may be, okay, I may know the, uh, the, the problem here, okay? Uh, obviously, geospace lasers. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course. Uh, no, what you have here is freak snowstorms. Okay. Unusually high temperatures in summertime. Uh, could it be climate change? Hmm. Partly, obviously. Uh, yes, climate change has a lot to do with the warming of temperatures uh, of the earth. And so what you have is more extremes. 
more extreme weather events, including freak snowstorms, when there sh where you shouldn't have freak snowstorms, as well as generally hotter temperatures, more extreme droughts, more extreme temperatures, and all that stuff. So now, add to that, because again, okay, climate change, well, we all know, or at least we all should know, that it is here, that it's happening, you could prepare for it. Well, that was the other part of the thing, is that they didn't prepare for it. The Texas grid is highly deregulated. In fact, it is completely separate from the rest of the United States grid, uh, which means they, uh, because they weren't regulated, didn't prepare for the storms, didn't prepare for the heat wave, didn't prepare for these unusually high temperatures. And so what you end up having is a gigantic double whammy. They did not plan for the effects of climate change in the grid. And now as a result of climate change, the grid is failing. It seems like you could have actually done something about this by being smart and not stupid. Texas, understand that Texas, Texas is a pretty big state. Texas has a lot of real estate and a lot of sunlight. It, it seems like a great place to put massive solar generators. I think that if you're not investing in solar, think about it this way. That is limitless free energy down the drain. It is comically stupid as a society, as a state, to not invest into solar. And for one, by the way, jobs. Jobs, good jobs. Not only that, it reduces emissions and slows down climate change, which right now is destroying your grid. And three, as long as you have robust energy storage solutions, as well as a proper energy mix for emergencies, you can weather, get, get the pun here, you can weather emergencies such as this. But no, that costs money. Also, in Texas, we only do things for profit here. Uh, and also, big bad government, freedom, tree of liberty, bald eagles, and stuff. You know, that kind of thing. Now, Ted Cruz is the senator of Texas, I mentioned. Uh, and he is, uh, again, one of the tweets, going back to that, that aged pretty poorly here, goes back to when California was having some power problems. Here's what Ted Cruz tweeted about this. He said, California, this is back of August 2020, California is now unable to perform even basic functions of civilization, like having reliable electricity. Biden-Harris AOC want to make California's failed energy policy the standard nationwide. Hope you don't like air conditioning. For one, hey, Ted, fuck you. All right. Uh, secondly, the official analysis of California's blackouts, which they had in August of 2020, highlighted three different main reasons for the outages. Again, hot weather exacerbated by climate change, antiquated grid reliability uh, planning, and malfunctioning energy markets. So now, if you're looking to blame renewables like Ted Cruz and other Texas officials have on what happened in Texas and also what happened in California, well, um, you're sadly going to be mistaken. It is not the fault of renewable energies. As I said earlier, 80% of the downed plants in Texas were thermal, natural gas plants. Another thing to point out is that the blackouts in Texas were actually worse. In California, in the August 2020 outages were actually smaller and far shorter. Uh, in fact, on August 14th, the California grid operator had asked utilities to shed about a total of 500 megawatts of load for approximately two hours. So, hey, you know, that extra TV you've got on uh, or, you know, maybe maybe you set your air conditioner to like 75. Do that for a couple of hours and we can avoid rolling blackouts. On August of 15th, uh, uh, I'm sorry, August 15th of 2020, it was actually about 500 megawatts of load. For a total of 20 minutes. In Texas, they are telling people right now not to use lights, pool pumps, as well as to avoid using large appliances such as ovens, washing machines, dryers, and turning off or unplugging 
unused electrical appliances. And that is not for two hours or 20 minutes. It is for at least an entire week. The difference here is they're kind of stark. It's bad in Texas. And unfortunately for Texans, it is self-inflicted, mainly because they refused to take the extra time and spend the extra money to weatherproof. And again, since they have an isolated grid, they're not able to do what California was uh, actually able to do during their blackouts uh, or brownouts or their power issues, which is, of course, get uh, borrow power from other states because of the connected power grid. Texas doesn't have that. They said, no, we're going to stand on our own and we're going to deregulate the hell out of all of this, uh, out of our power system. And of course, lo and behold, this is what happens when you do that. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.